Lucius Aeneas Seneca, 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 Lucius Aeneas Seneca. Okay, now that we're all sitting comfortably, we shall begin. We can, we will continue with letter 12. I, I want to skip the, the uh, 11 and, sorry, 10 and 11 because I don't think they are really different from what we talked about before. I'm not going to read you the whole letter. I'll skip a little bit because it is uh, not incredibly long, but it's not short. From Seneca to Lucilius, greetings. Everywhere I turn, I see signs of my advancing age. Arriving at my villa near the city, I began complaining about my expenditures on the building, which was falling apart. My property manager told me it was not his fault. He was doing everything he could, but the house was old. That villa was put up under my direction. What will become of me if stonework that is my own age is that decrepit? Annoyed with him, I seized on the nearest excuse to vent my anger. Those plane trees, I said, are obviously being neglected. They have no leaves. Their branches are terribly gnarled and parched by the sun. Their trunks are all discolored and the bark is flaking. This wouldn't be happening if they were kept fertilized and watered. He swore to me by my ancestral spirit that he was doing all that and taking care of them in every way, but the trees were getting old. Just between us, I was the one who planted them. When their first leaves came out, I was there to see them. Turning to the door, <clears throat> Who's that? I asked. He's decrepit. You were right to station him by the door. He's on his way out. Where did you get him? Is it some whim of yours to take a corpse off someone's hands? But the man said, don't you recognize me? I'm Felicio. You used to bring your trinkets to show me. I'm the property manager, Philostitus' son, your playfellow. He's nuts, said I. Has he now turned into a little child and also my playmate? Perhaps so. He's losing teeth enough. My suburban villa has done me a service. It has brought me, <clears throat> excuse me, it has brought my age before me at every turn. Let us embrace old age and love it. It is full of pleasure if you know what use to make of it. Fruit is sweetest just before it spoils. Boyhood, most attractive as it is departing. When one is devoted to wine, it is the last drink that brings, brings the most pleasure. The one that puts you under, giving you the final push to inebriation. Every pleasure saves its greatest delights for its last moments. The most pleasurable time of life is on the downhill side but before the drop-off. Even the time that stands at the very brink has its own pleasures, I believe. Or, if not, then it has this instead. No one, sorry, one no longer feels the need of any. How sweet it is to have worn out one's desires and left them behind. Okay, um, I skip a little bit here. Pacuvius, who made Syria his own by possession, used to hold funeral ceremonies for himself with wine and the ritual meal. After dinner, he would have himself carried to bed as his catamites clapped their hands and chanted in Greek to the accompaniment of instruments, Life is done! Life is done! Each and every day he performed his own burial. Let us do the same, not for bad reasons as he did, but for good. Glad and cheerful, let us say, as we go to our rest, I have done living. I have run the race that fortune set for me. If God gives us a tomorrow, let us be glad to receive it. The happiest person, the most untroubled possessor of himself, is the one who awaits the morrow without anxiety. Anyone who has said, I have done living, rises profitably each morning, having gained one day. I, was, uh, I, I, like, I like this letter a lot. Uh, Seneca has, has written about this quite a lot, and so has Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> I suppose so has Epictetus. I suppose it's a stoic theme, right? At any time we can depart life. That's um, slightly paraphrased, but that's a quote from Marcus Aurelius. At any time things can be over. When we were talking about the meditations, that theme came up a lot. At any time it could be over, right? But that's not really what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is what Seneca says about being reminded of your age, but also what that means. And I think we can approach that in a very positive perspective. I like this statement he makes about how, how things are good kind of before they end. I feel and I have felt for, for a while that 
I am now in many ways I don't really like this expression I never really like this expression but leading my best life my best life right and I had to think of this particular letter um, last night right now I am I am teaching a course called sensation and perception and it's uh, about the the cognitive neuroscience of the senses and I find that very interesting it's one of my favorite courses to teach because I find the senses incredibly interesting it's very interesting to to talk about uh, the, the the anatomy of, of our sensory organs the eyes the ears etc and also about the the brain areas involved with those uh, with those senses and how we perceive things how we actually put together images to see something etc last night I, I taught a, a, a class on the vestibular system the course starts off with vision and it's a lot of chapters and then we move on to hearing which is fewer chapters and then there is one chapter on the vestibular system and the vestibular system is interesting because it's complicated just like the ear if you've ever taken a sort of neuroscience or biology based course where you talked about the ear then you know exactly what I mean it's a, it's a beautiful system but it's very complicated it has a lot of moving parts and different liquids and it, it's just complicated and of all the senses that are in that course the vestibular system is the sense that I've talked about least I've taught it the, the least and the point I'm trying to make is I left the class yesterday and I felt fairly good about how that class had gone because I felt I mean you never really know but I felt that I had been clear in my explanation of that system and that traditionally has been the sensory system that I always dreaded teaching the most because I find that one the most complicated to explain and that's because I was least familiar with it and then I realized now I've taught a number of times this is I think the third time that I go over this yeah I think it was the third time the first time it was very difficult the second time was still pretty difficult but this time it was much easier for me and that too phenomena like that things that used to be hard but that got easier over time are a good indicator of time that is passing and that we are getting older and with age comes more experience and I know that I'm not that old and I know there are people who are much more experienced than I am but that is one example a very concrete example where I see it and where I feel it and I then as I was thinking about that I had to think of the head of psychology in the department where I wrote my PhD at some point we had a conversation not just him and I there were a couple of people involved I remember um, I was just a PhD student and he talked we were talking about experience and he talked about how I mean this was a man who at that point was in his 50s so he had like a good I don't know 25 years on me or something and he said certain things have become so much easier and he was talking about professional things doing research writing papers giving presentations teaching that kind of stuff he said, it's become so much easier things that used to take me enormous amounts of time are now so much easier and this was a full professor and the point I'm trying to make is that, that at that time I thought to myself well that would be nice yeah it would be nice if things would become easier and now I'm quite a couple of years further on in time and he was right a lot of things have become easier and some things are still hard but even the hard things I feel have become easier relatively speaking it's become easier for example to not be upset by smaller things in the past even very small things could upset me a lot and that's happening less and less it really is it's 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 quite rare now at least to the extent of how it used to be I get a lot less upset about small things the things that used to upset me in the past now make me think yeah why, why did I ever get upset about those things and I'm not perfect because I still sometimes get upset about about smaller things but it's much less so and that I think is a very important 
phenomenon in life, and this is still a series of videos about Stoicism, I hope that when I, when I talk about these kinds of life experiences and such, that it is of interest for you to watch. And if it's not, then, then let me know. But in my mind, these are still videos about Stoicism, because here is how this relates to Stoicism. The phenomenon of prokopsis, of progress. We make progress. Stoics were very clear about this. You are not perfect, and you never will be perfect. Only a sage, for example Socrates, was perfect. And even that's very debatable, but that's something to aspire to. An enlightened person is perfect, but you are not that. Period. You're something else. And that's okay. It's okay. As long as you make progress. As long as tomorrow you're a slightly better person than you were today. And today you're a slightly better person than you were yesterday. And it's, it's small measures. It's small measures. But if you improve a millimeter every day, then at the end of the year you've improved over 35 centimeters, more than a foot. Because it adds up right and that progress that extends to all things in life it's dealing with frustrations that's a very stoic thing it's dealing with mortality it's a very stoic thing it's dealing with setbacks in life that's a very stoic thing but it also deals with other positive everyday things in life things that were hard but that have now become easier because you have grown you have made progress. You've become a, just a little bit of a better person, right? And that, I think, is something we should never lose track of, especially when we get frustrated, maybe about a lack of progress, about that we feel that we're not moving fast enough. Well, as long as you are making genuine effort to move forward, you will move forward. It can be very slow, but you're still moving forward. And if you look at things every day, you may only see a millimeter of improvement, and that's not very much. But again, if you make that one millimeter a day, every day, then at the end of the year, you've made a lot of progress. And that's what matters. Not losing track of the bigger picture. And what that means for your life. And for your mental comfort. For the way you approach the unpleasant things in life. I think that's very important. Anyway, these were my musings for the day. Thinking of growing older and being reminded of growing older and how that is not necessarily a bad thing. I hope this was useful. Let me know your thoughts. And um, I'll gladly see you next week for more talk about Stoicism. Bye!